So welcome back. Now we're going to attempt our last question on circles before we move on to transformations and enlargements, all right? So we have this big triangle here, X, Y, Z. There's also a circle inside it that just about touches um, each of the sides, so X, Z, X, Y, and X, Z. So it touches the points at A, B, and C. So that makes these lines tangents to the circle, okay? And then also there's another triangle formed from those tangent points, so the triangle A, B, C. Okay, so hopefully that all makes sense. We also have, excuse me, you also have the angles 58 degrees, 62 degrees, and 60 degrees. So they're the interior angles of uh, the angle X, angle Y, and angle Z. And the question is to find the internal angles of A, B, C. So I want us to find this here, this here, and this here. Okay, so how are we going to do this? Um, one of the main tricks is going to be, say, let's just say from the last video so if you watch the last video then hopefully you remember um the trick about the tangent to circles so tangent to circles and um, that two tangents to a circle if they're from the same point are going to be the same distance so if you haven't watched the last video we'd recommend watching it because it'll make a lot more sense so two tangents from the same point to a circle they're always the same distance so for example if we take this point x okay and we look at these two yellow lines the two sides of the triangle as tangents Okay, if there's a tangent from x that hits the circle at two points, we know that xA is going to be equal to xB. Okay, that's from the last rule, so I'm just going to say that, that xA is equal to xB. We learned that in the last video, so that means we're going to put one line in there and one line in there. And what we can do is we can actually do this for every single other um, yeah, like line in the triangle. So we can go from y, we can go the two lines here, ya and yc. They're also the same length, so they might not be the same length as this one, so I'm going to put two, two lines in, um, but we know that YA is going to be equal to YC, and then finally we can do the exact same for this one here. So this is the kind of trick that makes this question um, doable, that you have to know that this line is always going to be the same as this line, and then it makes the rest of the question a lot easier. And again, if you're not totally sure why that is, uh, check out the last video, and if you're still not sure, then just drop a question down in the comments, and we'll try and answer it as best we can. Okay, so we now we have three different isosceles triangles, and we know that isosceles triangles, um, we know that the two base angles have to be the same, yeah? So that means it's a lot easier to calculate these base angles here, now that we know that they're isosceles triangles, okay? So we can calculate these base angles, those two angles, those angles, and those angles, and then eventually we'll be able to calculate the internal angles in uh, this triangle here, okay? So I'm going to start with the top two. Um, base angles, so I'm just going to scroll down a little bit, okay, so we know that, uh, I'm just going to call this one, what do I call it, I'm going to call it D, okay, so this is the angle D, and this is also the angle D, we know it's going to be the same distance, yeah, it's, it's going to be the same angle, because it's an isosceles triangle, so we have 58 plus 2D is equal to 180, so that means that 2D is equal to 122, 122, so that means D is equal to 61 degrees. Perfect, okay? Um, so that means we know that this is going to be 61 degrees. I'm not going to screw that in. The next one we're going to do is we're going to do, I'll go white, and we're going to do this angle and this angle, and I'm going to call this one E and this one E as well. So this is going to be much the same question. It's going to be that 62 plus 2E is equal to 180 degrees rearrange that so we're going to get that 2e is equal to 118 degrees that means e is equal to 59 degrees put a box around that uh, and if we do the same for this one here since we know that that is I'll go red since we know that this is 60 degrees we know and we know these are both going to be the same that means that this is also going to be 60 and this is also going to be 60 degrees does that make sense? So this is actually an equilateral triangle, so they're all going to be 60 degrees. So now that we have all of these angles, we should be able to get the inside angles. So I'll look at this one here, so the inside angle A. So we know that this plus this plus this, so I'm going to say, I'm going to call this A. Okay, so the inside angle A, this is the inside angle C, and this is the inside angle B. So we know that A plus D plus E is going to be equal to 180. So I'm just going to scroll down to do it. Sorry, I can't really have it all in the screen at the same time. So we're going to have that A plus D plus E is equal to 180 degrees. So that means that A is equal to 180 
minus d minus e, and that means, so I'll scroll down, a is equal to 180 minus 61 minus 59, so that means that a is equal to 60 degrees. So that's the first one done. So now we can do that again for, we'll do this base one here. So we're going to say that E plus C plus 60 is equal to 180. So we know that this is E, we know that this is C, this is what we're looking for. So this C here, and we know that this is 60 degrees. So this is all at the bottom. Um, so that means that C is equal to 180 minus 60 minus E, which is 59. So that means that C is going to be 61 degrees. Uh, and then we know that B, if we do the same thing for B, okay, I'm not going to go through it all. Basically, we're going to know that B is equal to 59 degrees. Okay, so that, that's our answer there. We have the internal angles A, B, and C, which is 60 degrees, 59 degrees, and 61 degrees. So that one isn't too hard once you get this initial trick that uh, each of these lines is the same, but it's things like those that can be really, really difficult at the start. So you really need to know your stuff for geometry, and then after that, it's kind of a knock-on effect. You'll just get one thing after the next until eventually you have uh, what you're looking for. Yeah, so hopefully this helped. Hopefully those videos on circular geometry helped. In the next videos, we're going to look at transformations and enlargements. Um, so yeah, we'll see you in the next video, I guess. If you like these videos, then like and subscribe and share them with your friends and all that stuff. Um, but until then, we'll see you in the next video. So thanks for watching.